Hello, this is Sam Merrick and welcome to Hospitality Talks. Welcome everybody, this is Avid Bhatt. Well, we are really delighted to uh, bring you our first show uh, of the year, or first show ever, I guess. So it's uh, uh, something we've been planning and dreaming about uh, a long time to do for you and particularly invite uh, all the hospitality professionals that are interested in hospitality to join our discussion. I think our industry has gone through a tremendous transformation over the last decade and is there is just the beginning there is a lot more to come so we wanted to provide a platform for active discussions uh, with the relevant topics that our colleagues in the industry face every day so we hope that uh, you will invite your friends and industry colleagues to partake in this discussion so that we can bring uh, uh, relevant topics each month as we uh, get on this broadcast. Great, and uh, I would like to welcome all the live viewers and also the uh, replay viewers. If you were not able to join us live, uh, you're very welcome. And uh, while you, if you're watching us live now, just put into the comment where you are viewing from. I see already a friend uh, Hakan who is in Cyprus so welcome Hakan good to have you with us he's watching us from Facebook oh that's great yeah uh, that's that's fabulous uh, uh, this uh, broadcast is being multicasted on Twitter uh, LinkedIn and Facebook am I correct Sam that's correct yes we are on uh, we are doing this uh, omni channeling so this is uh, we are on top of the game with you <laughs> <laughs> And, and this is a, a great segue into what our uh, part of our discussion is going to be as to how the technology is impacting uh, everyday lives and what we do, uh, particularly in the hospitality industry. I think a good part of our segment today is going to focus on technological impacts uh, throughout the con customer journey. Right. So uh, shall we jump into the topics and uh, I'll pull up the slides. Terrific. OK, So, it, just uh, broadly speaking, we wanted to talk about how uh, the the broader issues are impacting, whether the geopolitical issues, uh, whether it's the demographic changes uh, in, in also the safety and security things. So it, 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 uh, one topic that is front and center these days in the news cycle is the coronavirus as to how that is going to impact the travel industry generally. Unfortunately, the, the, it became, uh, uh, the spread became very common during the Chinese New Year. And it, 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 a lot of the, the cities and countries were quarantined as a result of that. So it, that's just a... Uh, 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 an example of how safety, security, uh, and or geopolitical issues uh, can take par uh, part in impacting where the travelers go, uh, visa issues, if there is a social unrest in that particular city, all of a sudden that the, the travelers would select a different destination as opposed to going to where they might have thought of. Demographic changes, uh, uh, the baby boomers versus millennials versus uh, Gen Z, how they decide as to what is important for them to visit the uh, destination. I think all those topics are, are very relevant and play a very critical role in, in uh, travel and tourism industry, but also in the hotels. Great. I just want to give a shout out to, here on LinkedIn. We have Vera Hartz based in Abu Dhabi. She's with Mubadala Real Estate and also uh, Pius or Pius Furlong. Story, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. And he says, greeting to you both from Dubai. So great to have. Ah. We have now people from Cyprus and Dubai and Abu Dhabi on, on our broadcast. Fabulous. Uh, it's, it's great to have you all here. I'm glad that the timing worked out as we had said in our introductory uh, video that we will adjust the timing to facilitate more participation uh, in, in different parts of geography. So please do send us feedback as to how the 
timing works and if th there is some adjustment that we can put together. And, and also that um, uh, while you're on the broadcast, please share this with your friends uh, while you're on the broadcast and uh, feel free to put some comments and questions uh, because this will help us to further get closer together of what are the things that matters to you most. And uh, we are then also covering the exponential technologies, the uh, hyper connectivity, uh, because system devices uh, are constantly connected. And you know, the, the thing is that, ha that is really relevant today, the, everything is connected on internet. And uh, there's a loads and streams of information being uh, exchanged uh, uh, as, we, as we go along. So we're gonna talk about this and also the customer journey, uh, what customer journey, uh, particularly how the tech is playing in, in the customer journey and uh, service delivery, uh, what is the kind of tech behind the scenes that matters because from the traveler and customer point of view, it's really uh, should be dealing with a person or something that can help you to get the service uh, when you want it, where you want it and how you want it. And uh, so uh, those are the uh, topics we're going to touch on today. And um, I hope you are, uh, uh, who are joining, just welcome, welcome to, to our show. Very glad to have you with us. And uh, so, uh, Abid, shall we dig into the first set of uh, topics? Terrific. All Terrific. right. I think I, I, we need, I, I, yeah. I think as we started our conversation, you'll notice that technology is playing a critical role uh, in what goes on in, in all businesses, but also in uh, tour and travel industry and hotel industry. So that's a, a great segue. We will talk about uh, some of the most recent things that uh, we have all experienced and how they continue to evolve. Very good. So, um, <clears throat> Here we are on, uh, we are talking about the recent trends and now we are uh, looking at sort of the virtual communities, meaning the sharing, the communities are sharing common interests. There are millions of communities online and as a marketeers, as a hoteliers, as a hospitality drivers, as a traveler, you are without a doubt in some of these uh, communities, whether it's LinkedIn, like we are here now, this is the professional, and you have noticed how LinkedIn has evolved over the couple of years. Uh, I just remember when I first signed up for LinkedIn is to drop my CV there looking for the next job, but now it is actually a, a business network that are exchanging rapidly information and you are connecting digitally and making new friends digitally uh, on in this community. And I have I, I met a number of friends already and I'm in constant contact, have given a chance to join them on various uh, uh, dig discussions on, on this platform. And, and then of course we have Instagram. Uh, if you are, could you write down in your comments, which is your favorite virtual community where you are in and whether it's for business or for, for private, uh, we, we would be very interested to get your feedback on this. Uh, you know, it can be a number of things, uh, whether you're, if you're interested to find out the, the history of your, of your family, that would be my heritage. It's a community, right? Or if you are interested in just, uh, in, uh, how many people started into the virtual community, which would be Facebook and Facebook is, has changed now becoming more of groups, uh, closed groups, which are meeting and, uh, uh, LinkedIn, for instance, have a closed group, uh, where you are discussion or it's a particular hobby you have uh, or you want to learn more about uh, bots, there have the closed group. So there are many groups in, in Facebook for that. And uh, <clears throat> particularly Instagram has is really showing sort of the, the direction uh, people are taking and using these kind of platforms. And also it's important for hotels and hospitality providers to see how they can uh, get close to the customer through these digital uh, platforms. Instagram has uh, several features. You can either do a story where you can just tell the basic things that's going on in your hotel uh, and it disappears in 24 hours. 
uh, or you can do a post where you make some announcements. Uh, I think the last thing people want to see is a hotel room in, in, in Instagram. And they want to hear something about that uh, makes them stay and learn more about who you are. And then, of course, you have the opportunity to do live features. That is called, uh, these are the vertical videos, which is called an Instagram TV. And I like that format very much. The reason being is that uh, when I travel, I like to take uh, videos with my uh, mobile device and record my stay somewhere. I, for instance, went to Malta and uh, attended a conference and I had a chance to interview some hoteliers there. And I posted this on, on my IGTV channel. So these are just few samples of how a virtual community is growing, changing, evolving continuously. And it's very important to watch out what is happening uh, where your uh, target customers are at the time. They are not all in Facebook anymore. They found different platforms that keeps them entertained. And for the different generation, whether it's the uh, millennials or Y or millennial mindset people like us uh, with Avid, you know, we are testing different things and uh, we're trying to learn continuously how this virtual communities evolve. Just as a tip, my latest uh, trial is called Byte. B-Y-T-E, and that is uh, used to be called Vine, and these are six second videos. And I start to just take them snapshots about the day and, and post it. It turns out that it's, uh, you can create inspiring small stories about the place you are, uh, your, your hotel or your uh, destination uh, in these short clips. It takes actually more work to, to put something together for six seconds than for one hour, but uh, uh, give it a try. It's, it's just a, a, you will be an early adapter and um, uh, let me know when you're there and I will follow you. So Sam, the, the uh, takeaways here again, th this is a technologically driven virtual communities came about purely as a result of technology. And one thing that has uh, been in use and near and dear to a lot of the hotels uh, uh, in, in b hotel business is TripAdvisor. It's all user-generated content. We've all gotten used to it. Uh, from a business point of view, we want to make sure that the reviews are favorable. From a consumer point of view, they go there to figure it out whether the hotel is able to live up to their reputation or not. Far more than a perfectly done ad that a business would put together, they would rather go to their peer group and ask their opinions. And these virtual communities have become uh, major gathering places for like-minded people uh, to find out about uh, lots of different activities. A great segue into the next thing, yet again technologically driven, is the sharing economy. It's in, in, um, from a lodging perspective, Airbnb is the largest platform that has come into play now. Uh, they changed to a great deal uh, what the the uh, overnight accommodations were meant to be. It was driven by consumer demand, a different type of consumer that was looking for a different type of accommodation, but it was enabled by technology. Um, same thing as all of you might have uh, used, the ride-sharing uh, apps that are available, whether it is the likes of Uber or Kareem or whatever app it is that is used in the area that you are based in, totally changed how transportation might work, where language is no longer a barrier. Uh, you put your destination in, uh, where if you are in China and in, in uh, you using one of these apps, language might have created a problem going to a typical cab with use of this app it's no longer the case and, and the uh, driver will take you exactly to the location that you need to be at without any surprises. Yeah. And also, I mean, in addition, the, what is very popular in, in Finland, uh, where I'm located, is Volt, which is providing you can uh, book a meal from any of the 50, 60 restaurants where they are servicing from and they bring your meal uh, to, your, to the place you want it to be delivered to. And uh, that is one of the success stories. And I found out I was uh, visiting Arctic Lapland and uh, one of the customers staying in, in uh, one of those very nice uh, chalets realized that there's not, there's not a restaurant nearby. So 
the first thing they were asking is there a vault service here so as we said well uh, not quite yet i'm sure it'll be coming eventually but uh, i think yeah, we have to wait a little bit for vault to evolve into the arctic lapland but uh, i really could see vault being sitting behind a reindeer and a sleigh delivering food for people <laughs> I, I I think it's just a matter of time, to be honest, and, and that would be a great experience that I'm sure a lot of the people that have not visited that destination will probably uh, utilize because it'll be very different, very local to that location. Um, exactly. And also, I mean, it, now it also gives you opportunities if you are a freelancer uh, because of the Upworks, Upwork and Fiverr and all these uh, sharing communities gives people a chance to do uh, uh, consultancy jobs or gigs uh, and uh, not, re not relying on a full-time job anymore. So a lot of these are the things that uh, is part of today and, and continue growing. So it, 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 OTAs is a great segue. That's something that we have extensively utilized in the last decade in the hotel industry has grown to love it and hate it at the same time. Uh, a lot of us in the industry complain about the uh, customer acquisition costs that might be attached to the OTAs, but yes, OTAs filled a, a need that the consumer had in creating a marketplace and providing ultimate transparency. Granted, the consumer gravitated to that, uh, uh, hotels have to be far more transparent, uh, be able to deal with it at the uh, consumer uh, uh, needs, um, as opposed to keeping it close to what the hotel had done in the past, that you had to reach out to each individual place. It provided a great uh, distribution platform, but much like everything else, it, it has to be deployed and used thoughtfully. Exactly. And of course, we'll be being a hotelier, I remember this time when we, we talked about the, the online travel agencies and the commissions basis and so on. And it was really natural why the, this, the success of the OTAs became uh, uh, because, first of all, the, the money they are spending on marketing, uh, because it's one of the pillars, technology and marketing are the key pillars for them besides the inventory and, and compliance. And uh, they have access to the, the, the latest technology and also they're creating an all-round uh, experience. So it's like one-stop shop for people to go. And it, it drives uh, tremendous business to those, uh, uh, obviously help hotels. And from my experience in destinations like uh, uh, where they have boutique hotels, it's quite common in Finland and also in, from my experience in, in Malta that uh, hotels start for the first two years they want to rely to boost their business uh, uh, through the online travel agents and then gradually build their own base for, for, for the uh, own customer base. But of course, the, the, the drawback, of course, is that the, you don't have a detail of the, who your customer is until they, they join you. So it's important that you get some sort of a, uh, hopefully get their email so you can keep in touch with them uh, for their next day. It, 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 this uh, goes straight into the the uh, digitized guest experience. So far, we talked about virtual communities where people can find out about the destination and the hotels, uh, how the sharing economy and OTAs have had an impact, and and those are just steps that that uh, consumers and guests have taken until they get to the hotel. And yet again, the deployment of technology can help you deliver uh, according to the guest expectations, whether it's deployed in um, guest facing technology where you can get to know the customer better, or it is the background stuff that goes on uh, prior to or post guest departure. Right. Uh, the consumer electronic show in Las Vegas is a perfect example. What are the key things that is going in that, uh, what kind of products is going to be coming out in, in uh, this year and next year. And what everybody was talking about was mobile. Not mobile as a device. And one of the things that, I, uh, that the people talk about that mobile is not longer a device. Uh, it's not that in a, a device in an aluminum case and a glass panel, it's a situation. 
what it means is that any products that supports the situation that the consumer has uh, when they want to have some information or they want to connect with a, with a hotel is well, how it's going to be. So I give you an example. For, for example, uh, because mobile is on internet, always connected, and uh, one of the biggest sellers for uh, for Apple has been the iPods, and that means that the, the next step is really that you don't have to need to rely on a picture, but it could be the voice. So it's voice activation. So it's important for you as a hotelier to study your con customer and what are their, how are they using these devices anymore. So you're thinking it point of, from the point of view of a situation, how, for what reason they, they need information and because you don't always need a screen when you can uh, ask the question from Siri or, or Alexa, for instance, you have in your rooms, which uh, is the thing that uh, uh, is a controversial topic, whether you want to have an Alexa sitting in your hotel room and you can give them your wishes and demands. But the fact is that uh, screen, the voice is becoming a very important part. Uh, the, the third part, which is the, uh, on the device, is the screen, and the screen is becoming uh, perhaps less important because of, uh, and the reason being is, for instance, now they're rolling out this uh, foldable screens, which are probably not very good quality yet, but it means is that, that uh, the, the situation you are, you, that you need information from your device uh, is that you may want to uh, see that that screen can be transported and the picture can be transported somewhere else. Uh, the Google glasses were a, were a flop. People never bought into it. But I think the future will be that you may be able to get the, all the information uh, depending on the situation, either uh, transmitted to a screen of some sort, whether it's in a glass or on the wall or somewhere else. So those are the things that's worthwhile to look what consumers are starting to use and then uh, use this in your way, how you can approach your uh, customers uh, much better. Another part of the digital customer experience is of course the chatbot. And it's a little bit of a difficult thing, the chatbot for, for many, because it's the first step is our hotels are using it for in Facebook. But uh, I, I tested about 50 hotels, how the chatbot uses, and I realized that they were, not, they were relying, relying more at somebody who is live on the other side. And then there was a message that we will reply to your message in 24 hours. Unfortunately, people are not that patient anymore, <laughs> wanting to wait for 24 hours for, for reply. But the clever way really is to, uh, to use the... Uh, bot in your website, for instance, and then develop your most 20, 30 most important questions that people are asking you. You can learn them from your trip advisor or from your website or from your Facebook page and give them the answers. That is your start for, for collecting information. And eventually, this is where the artificial intelligence and the machine learning will start to take over to, to help you to give a quick answer to the most common questions that that uh, uh, the customers have. Well, it, it, any technology as it's being uh, developed, it, it's going to evolve. Uh, we talked about voice assistants. Uh, uh, I use it all the time at home. So for domestic use, it's a totally different thing. But when it gets to a commercial use, of course, there are a lot of regulatory issues, there are privacy issues. There are lots and lots and lots of things that have to be uh, looked into before it becomes commercially viable in, in uses like hotels. But once the consumer gets used to these technologies um, in their personal use, it's only a matter of time that they're demanded uh, when they are visiting uh, and staying in hotels. And, and look, it, 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 it's a, it, we are going to talk about how the, the travel and tourism continues to grow. As a matter of fact, that's one sector that grew double digit even uh, when the, the global financial crisis was there. As the wealth creation uh, um, grows, as more people are going into middle class, uh, it's innate in human beings to want to travel and experience other places. It's also because of the, the global demographic changes where uh, baby boomers, though they were the wealthiest generation at one particular point, 
it's a matter of time that that's going to be taken over, but also the younger generation, how they view visiting different destinations and what their expectations are. They have um, grown up in an era where technology is very prevalent. So for them, not having some of the technological capabilities uh, to be able to conduct business and connect with the businesses is just unacceptable. Yeah, exactly. And uh, uh, when we talk about the global tourism, uh, there uh, there's a tremendous growth growth to areas which has been a little bit under the radar and maybe a reluctancy of traveling to those areas. And uh, the latest thing I read about and I saw, in fact, uh, uh, on uh, uh, France TV 24, they talk about Rwanda. Now, for many people, maybe the Rwanda, Rwanda is not maybe your, 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 what you're thinking of. Maybe it's not the place to go. But they have evolved over the years. And uh, in fact, they are, have a huge boost in their effort to create this uh, visit to Rwanda, particularly for the experiential travelers. And the experiential traveler are, uh, can be millennials because they're looking for, uh, for them, luxury is creating a, a great experience, travel experience. And also for baby boomers with more time in the hand that they have an opportunity to see places where they didn't go while they were busy in their working life. So uh, that is part of that is providing a tremendous growth. And, uh, you know, people see luxury as a not as a product, but more as an experience. And I I work very I work on daily basis with a company and they're all millennials and uh, None of them, are, they don't own a car. They are dealing with electric bicycles and uh, they only, in fact, they are uh, not, if they, have, if they have a car, they prefer to have an electric car, but they don't buy them anymore. They just uh, uh, rent them for short-term basis. And for traveling, uh, there's really, up here in nor Northern Europe, it is not seen very good of you if you are taking short flights for your pleasure trips. It it kind of sneered for if you remember last year <clears throat> there was a talk about this fly fly shame uh, hashtags because people were bragging about going on a quick weekend trip somewhere else and they took a plane and took photos of uh, from the uh, from the seat of the plane and so on and somebody started to put the hashtags uh, fleek scum or fly shame and uh, that kind of took off and people feel a little bit uh, reluctant of making trips like from Stockholm to Göteborg by plane where they can take the train. They just take a little more time and they can continue working. So those are things that means to a lot of people more than anything and particularly for the, uh, for the millennials and for, that, the gen for the generation where values of sustainability and, and uh, looking at uh, safeguarding the, our heritage and our life and our, for the future, future generations. A very good point. The consumers uh, are very knowledgeable. They want to make sure that the organizations are uh, truly taking care of the environment. And it's not just a climate per se. It could be the social environment. It could be where we operate, how they look after the communities. But it, it, a lot of uh, travelers, particularly the millennials, as they travel, they want to be able to do some um volunteer work, which has uh, started a whole sector of uh, travel and tourism, but sustainability as a result of uh, people becoming more aware has become a very big issue. Uh, and it continues to be front and center. Yeah, uh, I just remember, uh, I mentioned to you earlier that day, I had dinner a couple of nights ago in a new restaurant uh, that opened up in Helsinki. Uh, it's called Zero or Nolla in, in Finnish. And so I was wondering, how can they have a name like Zero for a place to eat? But I think that the, the story really is that uh, there's no waste. That, 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 it doesn't mean that they're using recycled food, but it means that for whatever they are producing, it is zero waste. And uh, that restaurant is packed. It just shows sort of that uh, how the restaurant business is also evolving taking that concern about the environment and also waste. Uh, waste is a very sensitive issue here in Finland, for instance, that we don't like to uh, waste. And uh, that shows that how young, talented chefs who incidentally are 
have been coming to Finland from uh, Serbia, Portugal and Spain. They put the restaurant together with their Finnish colleagues and call it Zero and, uh, and creating a really wonderful experience for, for the visitors. So it's just for, it's an example about uh, taking a responsibility of, your, uh, of, your, of the society and also uh, taking care, looking at how the customer's needs have, uh, have changed and the requirement has changed. Terrific. Right. So how's everybody doing? I have, uh, I saw, maybe I should take a couple of shout outs here. Uh, we have on Periscope, I have Ileana who said hello. Uh, Jayant, my buddy Jayant from Bangalore. Uh, he is really my uh, tech trend watcher and uh, we do podcasts together. So shout out to Jayant in Bangalore. Uh, we had a lot of good discussions uh, on various topics and uh, 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 he is on LinkedIn also, so Convergence Analyst. So keep an eye on that. Uh, so a big shout out to Jayant from, from us here on our LinkedIn, LinkedIn Live today. Well, thanks for everybody that joined in live. Uh, this will be posted up on our um, a group page and several other platforms. So uh, we will be sharing that with you. And, and if people were not able to jo join in, at least they can view it at their convenience later on. So it, it, I guess we should uh, get into uh, some of the other discussion points that could be somewhat controversial and, and differing points of views uh, based on what we have uh, talked about thus far. It, if personalization is that important, if, if consumer is looking for very unique things, one of the topic that comes up constantly is standardization as we have known it in the past. Is it still relevant? Uh, would love to know your thoughts. Uh, how relevant is it, or, or is it standardization in a different way uh, to make sure that the consumer is comfortable? If uh, Airbnb that uh, has um, home-like environments with absolutely no uh, rules, virtually no rules, I'm sure they do have rules, but virtually no rules or other uh, accommodation platforms that are uh, coming on online uh, is standardization really important or is there still a, a, a segment that seeks out that standardization yes please put in your comments and uh, this will help us to uh, you have a chance to then to be creating an episode for the next discussions and once we are posting uh, the link to this video in hospitality group, we will continue the discussion uh, after this broadcast. So, uh, so the standardization is, is it really relevant or not relevant anymore? Uh, for those who have uh, worked during the analog era, standardization was a very important part of making sure that we have very uh, good, even quality services. But I think uh, that doesn't really mean the same way, same thing anymore. Uh, what is that? What does standardization mean to you? It, it, it same thing on on value creation. How do you create values? Uh, you know, is it about mass market or is it about niche market? Again, if we stay to personalization side of it, it would be more about going after the customer uh, that can relate to that resonates with the business. So it's not a shotgun approach it'll be more uh, relative to what's appropriate uh, but that's a discussion to be had so um, is it relative uh, uh, should you go after really personalized businesses or uh, mass market yeah exactly i mean example is that uh, large um, hotel management companies with 35 brands they try to slice make a thin slice of a niche that they they have noticed and create a brand around it do you agree on this is this something relevant or like uh, for my friends in dubai and abu dhabi i there was someone who was saying that uh, that some of these large companies with the 35 brands is like a walmart of, of brands so uh, and now there's a shift where smaller hotel management companies with the very specific brands that are that they are experts on are actually taking the lead in creating value for for uh, 
customers and also for those who own the hotels. And I think these soft brands came about as a result of uh, sort of uh, unique experiences, personalized offerings, uh, and that's a, a, a taken a whole new uh, um, twist in the in the hotel industry. There are lots of uh, independent or uh, individually branded hotels that use uh, soft brands from uh, either large companies for distribution perspective or just operate independently. A and technology has facilitated that. Well, I, there was something which comes as, as eye opener to me. Uh, you know, I'm coming from the point where hotel management companies with their brands are, they say that the brand is the, the asset, my asset and the, I'm very protective of this brand and I only prepare to uh, operate the hotel if I have some say in this as a, as a, a being in charge of the brand. But now there's a shift in discussions where many of the hotel companies are preferring to do franchise deals and they become only the distributors, which is quite interesting development now uh, from the past? Well, look, it, brands are very emotive. Uh, people uh, gravitate to a certain brand because it it, it, um, it creates some relevance for them uh, in the same space, whether it's retail, hospitality, uh, anything that you look at, technology, there are brands that people would like or dislike. Um, it, it, the relevance of the brand in the old days, it was massive because that's the only way consumer found out what they were about to get or not get. Now, within the brand, um, different offerings in different parts of the world, it, it is the consumer generated content that can can uh, uh, deliver a better transparency. So it's a very interesting dynamics that within the brand people are still looking to uh, uh, find the niche that works for them. Yeah. I'm also interested uh, now, since we are moving on in a discussion of thoughts about the technology as the accelerator for business, what technology are are you using currently for your hotels? Uh, it would be great if you can get, get in the comments uh, because there are, there are new products coming out and I know there's some reluctancy of... Uh, uh, buying into new systems, uh, but there are also other th opportunities uh, to uh, provide uh, uh, different versions of technology. Uh, what comes in mind is that uh, uh, you have, for instance, for to improve the customer service, you have a, a service provider from uh, from Hong Kong, where you have a, a device that you, once you check into the hotel, you have a device which becomes your the extension of the concierge in the hotel. And uh, which means that you can carry this around with you, this device. And if you get if you get lost and you need to call someone in the hotel and uh, you don't speak the language of the country, you can speak in your own language and they will be answering back to you in your language. So that's where all these uh, the technology comes in. Uh, what do you think of that? Would you use such a device to provide service for your customers? Uh, that's what, something which is actually growing in Asia quite a bit, this type of uh technologies and, and uh, sam you had, you had talked about uh, uh knowing where your customer um sort of which communities they belong to i think that's pivotal because you technologically you can better understand your consumer now it, it, there are always fl uh, two sides of the the, the uh, picture if you would Data protection has become a huge, big issue, um, what you can use that data for, but the availability of data and, and the thoughtful use of the data, you can develop uh, really deep relationships with your consumers. There is a lot of information available online, so without, uh, without uh, being overbearing towards your consumer, you can find out about uh, what their likes and dislikes are, and in, in from uh, customer acquisition to service delivery and post uh, use, uh, that whole uh, tr uh, experience can be better delivered, uh, not only to gain uh, more business, but also possibly reduce costs, uh, heighten experiences for the, for the consumer, and to keep in touch with them uh, after they leave your establishment. Yeah, I mean, it really comes down to trust that you 
that you can develop the trust with your customer that you are prepared and the trust that the way you are using the information they give you is in a used in the right way for for their benefit and so this is a, a sensitive area and uh, they are a good example how where it works very well because when it's used very well that you can delight your customer for your uh, consequent visits and keep them in touch and, and personalize their uh, trips or uh, future travels to stay with you so it's a win-win situation but uh, where it comes first in is that you have to develop that trust that they are prepared to give uh, you the right to use the information that they they can give you absolutely absolutely in in, in, in keeping on that uh, and we briefly talked about it earlier how um, artificial intelligence whether it's uses a bot or uh, if you look at uh, augmented reality, virtual reality type of uh, tools that are becoming available, they, it, it, virtual reality has become a pretty commonplace thing. Uh, Sam uh, earlier talked about Google Glasses that did not um, fare very well. But yet again, at least in mature markets, a lot of the regulatory issues uh, prevent rollout of these technologies or at least uh, um, uh, thoughtful use of these technologies to make sure that it, it is not going to um, uh, harm anybody. But, uh, you know, uh, virtual reality in gaming has become a huge thing and it's moving into hospitality, uh, uh, particularly for destination marketing. Uh, you can almost be transported into that area uh, without ever leaving your office. Uh, is that good or bad? Uh, I guess well, that's a discussion point. But at least you would know uh, what the expectations are. At least you would know whether this is a destination or a facility you, that you would <clears throat> enjoy and, and the businesses can present it in a way to attract their targeted audience. Yeah. Um, I just want to say hello again to Jay and because we had a discussion about uh, virtual reality and uh, uh, without uh, going into so long story about is that he's a he was a great fan of games of thrones and he said that uh, if he would check into a hotel and in the hotel room would he would meet Jon Snow he would never forget that hotel again he would always return to that hotel again and again so if there's a technology that evolves one of these days that you can provide that experience without the huge bulky uh, goggles, which uh, prevents many people from even wanting to use it, uh, but I think there is a future in there. Well, it, the, the the other thing which is now commonly being deployed in a lot of the large cities, uh, facial recognition, yet again, a controversial thing. Uh, uh, how do you maintain the privacy, uh, public privacy, but yet use it for um, enhancing experiences? It, 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 how does the hotel industry and travel industry use that to uh, to um, facilitate what the customer wants? Uh, th some of these things are new. Some of these things can be costly for deploying in the lodging industry and hotel industry, but it's a matter of time that they're going to become uh, commonplace. Uh, the, the voice assistance, while it can be available in the guest room and a lot of people have that to turn the lights on or off or, or turn the TV on and off. But a, a use uh, of having it at the front desk, for example, to be an interpreter between uh, language barriers, uh, all of a sudden that takes out hopefully any misunderstandings that might occur because uh, I don't speak whatever language it is, German, Chinese, Finnish, uh, 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 these these voice assistants can bridge that gap. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I think that uh, so we have a lot of technology available. Now it's just finding the common dem dem denominator that gives us uh, the consumer the trust to use the technology and the businesses to prepare to invest into the technology that will then provide a greater uh, customer experience. Very good. So um, we still have uh, social responsibility and moral economic obligation. 
Hey, I think we briefly touched on that earlier because it, with the demographic changes, people are becoming far more aware of how destinations uh, um, attract tourism. Um, I know there are a couple of destinations around the world where it, it, over tourism became a problem. The the locals rebelled against having uh, an onslaught of uh, tourism. Now, there are lots and lots of communities around the globe where tourism and, and travel is contributing a great deal to their uh, GDP. But if it's not done thoughtfully, if it's not done in a sustainable way, it could harm the environment a great deal. And, and uh, a lot of the travelers want to make sure not only from a macro point of view that, that it's uh, uh, marketed thoughtfully, uh, but also on, on the, uh, um, each business level, uh, whether it's single use plastic containers or as Sam talked about, zero waste or uh, what do you do with, with the, the leftover food, whether you convert it to compost or what, what, how far the food travels before it gets to the table. All those things are becoming uh, an important deciding factor for consumers to use your facilities. Yeah, exactly. And uh, final for time point is workforce availability. And it actually leads to uh, a very interesting topic, which will, is our uh, next episode or show that will take place on the 6th of March. We're going to talk about the how to uh, to retain and also how to attract talent in, in the industry for for that for our hospitality and the hotel industry yeah i i think again demographic changes education availability technology all those things are playing a role uh in in being able to attract the new leaders in the industry um, uh, hotels have to be far more cognizant in making sure that they evolve to be able to attract and, and be able to retain uh, the workforce. Labor pool continues to shrink in a lot of the markets around the world. Unemployment rates are at uh, all time low. So it, it, as the uh, economic growth occurs, as the uh, wealth generation occurs, um, labor pool becomes a big issue, uh, particularly in our industry, which is a high touch industry. Um, we need people to be able to carry that out. I guess that's true for any business. Without people, the businesses struggle. Yes. Uh, so uh, it, hotels need to be involved in not only contributing and making sure that they um, market to the future leaders and, and uh, future workforce, but also when when these people join um, uh, their their businesses, how do they take care of it? How do we adapt to the needs of uh, the the next generation? Uh, I I participate in a lot of hotel schools where I have uh, either gone in as a visiting lecturer or I teach. But also at high school level on the career days, I've gone in to talk about what the hotel business has to offer. So the people are, are better aware of this industry and the opportunities it presents. Yeah, and also I think there's a, a, a traditionally the hotel organization will need to take a different approach to uh, what the hotel organization is. And then also that, um, uh, that anyone working is not servicing the in, internal stakeholders, but they actually are serving the, uh, the actual customer. And there's a very interesting picture I saw uh, from one of the service providers where they had the uh, orchestra and the orchestra members uh, are, uh, or like in the orchestra would be, there's a housekeeper, there's a chef, uh, cooks, uh, receptionist, uh, bellboys, uh, and uh, all the staff and then in the, the instead of the director or the musical director or conductor it is the customer who's directing the the orchestra so there's a change of how the organization structure is at the ceo or general manager is on the top on the bottom of the pyramid and the customer is on the top and that of course is a way that the hotels uh, 
uh, many hotels are doing this already in fact and that shows how the the uh, the staff are able to make decisions on the spot to, uh, l l to provide the greatest customer experience that uh, the customer is expecting. I think that's a that's a, a great way uh, possibly to conclude this episode because as Sam mentioned, our next episode in March is going to focus on uh, workforce availability. How can uh, we better engage? How can the industry better engage to attract and retain uh, the future leaders of this business? Um, we really appreciate for those of you who participated live, please send the word out. We would love to have far more participation, but this, this will be um, uploaded to a lot of different channels and people that were not able to uh, connect with us live. Hopefully they'll get a chance to uh, look at it, participate in the discussion. Please post questions on the group page. We want it to be a very live and active uh, group. Yeah, and also from my side, also thank you very much. It has been a, a great to start our uh, start the the year of RAT or the 2020 with uh, a, a new group of hospitality talks. We have already uh, about 90 members, which is great. We We'd like to have 90 more. We'd like to have, if you didn't uh, join the group yet, please join. Uh, and uh, we look forward with Abit uh, being part of this uh, discussion in uh, one month from now. So with that to do, so thank you very much and I hope you have a good weekend. Until next time.